Hello internet and today we're going to be talking about the graces by uh, Laura Eve. I actually do own this book. I just don't want to pull it off my shelves because I'm already sitting on the floor in front of a camera. So yeah, here is a picture of that book. This is well known to be a horrible book with a beautiful cover. This is... I, I want to say every time I've ever heard about this book it is someone talking about how horrible it is and how it's not any good on the inside and I of course wanted to form my own opinion and tell you about it. I want to say I don't hate this book as much as everyone else seems to but that's kind of because I knew everyone else hated it and I'm pretty sure I tricked myself into sort of liking it uh, just out of simple childish pettiness that I didn't want to be like everyone else even though I know that I am like everyone else like a lot of other people. Anyway, point is this. I don't have a vapid hate for this book as I tend to for other books, but I'm about to get into the gritty details because opinions need context and I need spoilers to give that. Let's get into the details of this book and you're gonna try to question why I even like it. So this book is about a crazy stalker girl who isn't like other girls and her obsession over one family who may or may not be witches. These maybe witches are too cool for school and by faking it until she makes it, stalker girl gets in with the younger sister. After falling into a deep passionate obsession, obsession with the brother, stalker girl spends most of the book trying to be a badass nonchalant cool kid while also subtly seducing handsome witch boy. Even though she has clearly been sister zoned which is a level up from front zoning and she is not gonna have any luck there. Unfortunately this girl doesn't go full carry over the course of the book but more like a half carry like maybe a skim milk carry instead of a whole milk carry which I was disappointed by because I was kind of hoping that she would be some insane serial killer given the way that uh, the story was narrated it's in first person and I was kind of hoping that this was more of an American psycho but instead got like a Bateman light uh, severely disappointed in that aspect aspect but it was it was the aspect of her going carry that was really carrying me through this whole book. So to skip over to some of the interesting stuff which exists all the way at the back of the book, Stalker Girl convinces the witch siblings and one witch by associate friend of theirs to do a ritual uh, to get rid of some dude who's apparently harassing the eldest witch sister. Although we're never really clear on whether or not it is actually harassment as this book can get super hazy about the truth. After the witch rule, associate witch boy goes missing and presumed dead. After a long inconclusive investigation, stalker girl fesses up saying that she used her uncontrollable magic to wish this boy out of existence because it turns out witch brother is more into witch boys rather than stalker girls and that's not something stalker girl is okay with. She's kind of one of those with me or with no one sort of deals. So stalker girl is kicked out of the witch family and hated by the whole town because witch family doesn't want to talk to her anymore and everyone wants to be in cool with witch family because you know aesthetic and money. Even though she wishes witch brother's boyfriend back into existence which she didn't have to it really undercuts the whole murder feel if you can just undo the murder with magic fucking weak. Uh, so no one still likes her. The family still outcast her and, and it turns out that this whole book no one had f magic. The witch family was just a bunch of fakes using the rumors as publicity with the exception of Stalker Girl who has uh, who has been both repressing her magic because it turns out she has a habit of accidentally wishing away people and too desperate to learn it because she is super tired of accidentally killing people because they annoy her. So the book ends with Stalker Girl telling the witch sister friend, bitch, you thought my magic was fake? You thought all magic was fake, but guess what? It's real. I'm not the devil. I am God. You did not 
Did you not see me wish and then unwish the existence of a boy quite literally? Peace to everyone in this town because now you got a God watching out for you. So over the course of this book, I had a lot of numerous complex feelings, you could say. Most of the, the, the thoughts I had were just really hopeful ones. Like I was saying, I just really wanted a sort of American Psycho, maybe Carrie vibe. I was hoping that this character was really unreliable uh, and her, her vision was really unreliable as the way that she was talking in first person was just giving me that unreliable narrator vibe. I was hoping for more murder, so when we finally did get a murder, I highly suspected our main character all along. Turned out she did in fact do it, but then she undid it, which was super disappointing. But she is kind of a serial killer because she has in the past wished away other people, like say her father who disappointed her one time, and a few other people who she, she's just like magically like gotten rid of by accident because she has no control over her powers. I was hoping for more of a, a villain grown story again um but instead it kind of gives us this hopeful vibe that like she's gonna be a superhero sort of thing and she's finally willing to learn how to control her powers as this is the very first time she's ever wished someone back into existence after she disappeared them so now she's kind of hopeful and thinking oh yeah I can be a real witch and be a hero I'm kind of hoping that she just goes on a revenge spree or something like that um as this book is a part of a series surprisingly enough the second book just recently got published I think or was getting published soon anyway uh, apparently it is a thing I bought this book because it has eye motifs on the cover and it was really pretty and I like eye motifs and really pretty books otherwise I wouldn't highly suggest this book I think that and another comment is I think this book was a French uh, original publication like it was originally done in France uh, which explains a lot to me as I do not understand French entertainment I think that they are way too subversive and like not straightforward for me to enjoy with the exception of their cartoons because Miraculous Ladybug and Kodo Lyoko are both great cartoons that I will watch non-stop but everything else that comes from France I just I don't understand their entertainment or their way of telling a story. It just is way too symbolic for me. I don't know if that's what's going on with this book or if this book just wasn't a good book. I'm probably leaning towards the second option. It probably just wasn't that great of a book. It could have done with a lot more thriller aspects, a lot more of an unreliable character, a narrator, even though she was pretty unreliable in the end, and probably at least five more dead people. Yeah, definitely. The stuff book definitely could have been improved with a lot more dead people. So would I recommend this book despite the fact that I do not hate this book? No, no, don't read this book, okay? I don't hate this book, but I can definitely foresee several of you hating this book, okay? This was not a good book at all. It, it, it really wasn't. So I would say read this book if you want to be hopeful for something that's never going to arrive. Otherwise, it was just a very strange book that just has a really early 2000s, maybe 2010, 2013, I'm not like other girls vibe the whole entire time. And really confusing as I was like, oh, there's going to be magic. But then there was no magic. Turns out no one had magic except the one girl who you thought was the least magical of them. What? Yeah point is is that this book can be pretty confusing at time a little hazy on the details not very straightforward has a pretty cover but the contents well the contents are suspect and probably need to be judged by the individual reader before you give a final pass or fail i'ma give it a d minus yeah you put in some good effort. I can definitely see the attempt. I could see where, like, maybe you were almost close to the right answer. But you almost failed, okay? I just saw grace in this book. Enough grace in this book. That the graces wasn't a complete one star for me. Like, a two and a half three star. 
probably, but not a one star, okay? It wasn't that bad. Just kind of boring, but not like horrible. Nothing really harmful happens in this book. Just kind of, well, except, except for how <sighs> homo intolerant this girl is just trying to wish away this boy's boyfriend because she liked this boy. But I can't really blame her and call her queer hating more so she had that real girl obsession trope that I talked about the other day. Go see that video where I talk about how sometimes there's just this trope about this girl who's super obsessed with the handsome boy to the point that it's dangerous, right? Uh, she was definitely one of those girls. So I can't say that she was against the gays. More so she just hated the fact that this boy did not want her and would never want her. So if you think the graces are worth your time, after this video feel free to try it I mean at least like put it in your collection because it looks pretty nice but you know if you're not out here just trying to waste your money then like don't read this book like I don't know borrow it from the library or something save yourself the time and effort okay that's what I'm telling you save yourself the time and effort unless you really want to Otherwise, I think my explanation did a pretty good job of explaining the whole context of this book. So you're literally not missing anything. But if you like what you're seeing here and you want to continue to see more, click all those button buttons down below and goodbye, internet.